Hey, and welcome back to Private Lending Made Easy. I'm Cal Ewing. And in this video, you are gonna learn how to tap into your retirement savings accounts to rocket boost your retirement and hopefully and likely be able to retire a lot sooner than on your current path with whatever your investments are. Uh, I'm then gonna show you why private lending on real estate is one of the oldest and safest investment strategies. It's been around forever and why you've probably never heard about it from your banker or your investment broker or financial planner. And then after that, I'm gonna cover with you why private lending is a better alternative to owning rental properties, buying stocks, um, investing in RRSPs, GICs, and the like. Finally, I'm gonna share with you how you can be a successful private lender and lend in any real estate market, depend, no matter where it is in, in the real estate cycle, where house prices are going. First of all, though, I want to share a uh, story with you, and this is one I'm sure that you can relate to if you have a job and you're, you're in the, the business world. I, between my rock star life and my real estate investing life, was a geologist. I worked downtown, and I pretty much hated it, to be honest. Um, and when I first got my job with this big oil company, we had our meeting with HR, and uh, they sat me down, get, told me everything, blah, 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 the details about the job. And then they hand me this package and they say, okay, so you need to choose your investment where your, um, I'm in Canada, I, I live in Canada, so where your RRSPs are gonna be invested. You have two options here. You have these mutual funds, which are the lowest risk, and then you have these mutual funds over here, which are a little bit more risky. Choose, let us know by the end of the day which ones you want, here's some information. And I'm sure if you've been in this situation before, you kind of gave a cold stare and we're looking at it saying, well, either you're, you are a risk taker or you're not. So you immediately just said, well, I'm not gonna read this, but I'm gonna choose A or B. And that's pretty much what I did. I had no idea what these were. I still don't know. I just, I think I said the higher risk ones. I was young and I was like, let's do it. Let's, let's roll the dice, baby. Give me the higher risk ones. Um, and I didn't even know what the heck my, my RRSPs were being invested in. And I'm sure most of you are like that. If you have investments, regardless of where, how you're doing it, whether you have a broker or something like that, mutual funds, that kind of thing, do you even know what your money is being invested in? Like seriously, what is your money being secured to? Do you know? Do you know why it's a good investment or where things are, are headed? Um, I certainly didn't. And it was boring. I was unengaged. I hope my fingers were crossed and I kind of forgot about it. So my fingers weren't even crossed because I had no idea where my money was and, and what it was doing. And so I'd like to share with you why you can be in the driver's seat being a private lender. However, it doesn't necessarily have to take all of your time because I know you are probably very busy with life and you don't need something that's going to just be another drain on your life. So I'm going to teach you why private lending has been around forever and we just seem to have overlooked it as a society in general except for the very wealthy. And I think it comes down to those same brokers and those same um, fund managers and things like that. They have contracts with your company so that they can take your money and they can put it into their own funds and make way more money than you and, and make a living off your investment capital and you don't know anything about it and they're able to you know, secure their own retirement and make a killing off of your investments. And that's why they don't want you to know about private lending because they're suddenly out of a job. And obviously they don't want that. So they're not gonna refer you to option C, which is why don't you lend your money on real estate? And so this is what I'm doing is I'm lifting the blanket off of option C and sharing with you that regardless of where your investment dollars are, whether a retirement savings account or whether you just have cash saved up, you can lend it on real estate. Now that brings me into um, lending on your retirement accounts and how you can rocket boost your retirement savings by lending in real estate. And did you even know that that was an option? I'm guessing you probably didn't because most people, what they do is they buy mutual funds and things like that in their, um, in their 401k or their IRA, if you're in the US or your RRSP or TFSA, a lot of acronyms I'm throwing around here, but they're all the same. They're retirement savings accounts. And what the government has done is they set up these rules to A, protect your retirement savings so that you're growing them and so that they're ready and available for you when you retire. And of course they're tax-free during that time. 
but they have a lot of rules and, and the government's you know allied with certain companies to make sure that you're only investing in these things and then they take your money and they probably lend it out Ooh, hey they're lending so basically this is the, the the normal path that the average joe would take right well you can actually invest this money out of your retirement savings account and what you do is you transfer it into a what's called a self-directed IRA or self-directed RRSP. And it's a tax-free event because you're simply just transferring it from one retirement savings account to another. So you're still in compliance with the government rules and regulations. And then what you get is there's actually a third-party company that they're called an IRA custodian or an RRSP custodian. And their job is to take that money and lend it or invest it in whatever forms that you want to invest in. So you're in control. They make sure that it's done right and in compliance with rules and regulations. And, but you get to invest this in a whole variety of different things that you probably were unaware of. And one of them is real estate. So I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty and all the details about how this works because you really don't need to know. What you need to know is if you have retirement savings is find a way to get it into a self-directed account. And there's many, many options and companies out there that'll do that for you. All you have to do is search on Google and talk to, just give them a call in and ask them how it works. And most of these companies, these IRA custodians or RSP custodians, um, they have videos and they have webinars and they teach you, they'll take you right through how it works, how they help you and how to make sure that you're in compliance so that you're not having to pay tax and, and lose your retirement savings account. So. Let's bring this back to private lending. So once you move your retirement savings into a self-directed account, all you need to do is find a property or a project that you want to lend on and you talk to your IRA custodian and they do the, they do the transaction for you. And your IRA goes on title just as the lender, as you the lender would, would be on title and all the interest that you earn and all the profit that you make goes back into your retirement savings account. So it's always channeled and staying in your retirement savings and you're growing your, your retirement savings and your wealth through that. So as long as you're not taking money out of that and profiting from it, then you're in compliance with all the rules and regulations and you're able to grow and uh, really, like I say, propel your retirement a lot faster than if you just kept it in a safe, option A and B, low return investments. Okay, so now that we've established that pretty much anyone can be a private lender as long as you have some sort of retirement savings plan or you have some, some investment money saved up over time, I'd like to explain to you why this is a very good alternative for pretty much anyone um, versus the other options that are presented to you elsewhere. And I think I kind of covered some of it before, but um, things like mutual funds and stocks, unless you're really dedicated to spending a lot of your time getting into the, the nuts and bolts of your investment and studying the markets and studying the companies that you're investing in and knowing it inside and out and watching it and, and watching the markets go up and down and all of that that only really passionate stock market investors do, if that's not your cup of tea, then you're likely just handing this over to someone else and hoping that they're making good choices for you. And you have no idea if they actually are. So that is why I believe private lending is so much better than those options is because you're in control and it doesn't require a huge amount of your time and a huge amount of knowledge in order to, to make these investments. It does require a little bit of time, but not a lot. So instead of handing this off into the hands of someone else who really doesn't have your best interest in mind necessarily because they've got 10, 20, 100 other clients, you're the one focusing on building your own wealth and putting your money where you think it's going to do the best for you. Um, the other thing about these kind of paper investments, and I know people can say that doing a loan is a paper investment, but when you're buying stocks and mutual funds, you are investing in something that doesn't have any collateral behind it. It's a piece of paper. A stock is a piece of paper and that's what you're buying and it doesn't necessarily have anything behind it. Like any of the investments that you have, what collateral do you have? What's gonna protect you if that company suddenly goes belly up tomorrow and, and overnight your stock is worth nothing? Are, if you go back to your broker, are they gonna say, oh, here you go, we actually have a fail safe, here's your money back? Well, no. And if you set up a private, 
private lending deal right on real estate, you can actually protect yourself because of the collateral of an actual piece of property that your investment is tied to, um, that, that's your safety. Um, now, some of you might say, well, what about being a landlord? That's the same thing. I get to own a piece of property. I can be a landlord. And that is true. Being a landlord is awesome and it has a ton of benefits, but it also has a lot of drawbacks. And it's probably the reason why you don't own rental properties right now, or the reason why maybe you only have one or two and you're pulling your hair out. And that's because you have to manage the asset. You have to manage your property. And even if you hire a property manager, a lot of times you have to manage the manager. So it eventually starts becoming just another job that you have to add into your life besides your regular career and your family and everything else. And everyone hates those calls as a landlord where suddenly, you know, you've heard it before, the toilet breaks in the middle of the night. Guess who they call? They call you, right? And so the benefit of being a private lender is you've got your money tied to that same rental property per se, but you don't have to do anything with the property. So no one's going to call you. You don't call your bank if you're, or your tenants don't call the bank and say, Hey, the toilet broke, fix it. No, they call the property owner and you're just the lender. So you don't have to deal with any of those headaches. And that is the landlord's problem. If you're lending on say a rental property or even a fix and flip deal, if the flipper has some problems and they discover mold behind, behind the kitchen or something, that is the flipper's problem, the rehabber's problem. That is not your problem as the lender because you've set yourself up so that no matter what happens with that project, you get paid and you get your money and your interest and your loan back. And so that's why I think it's a lot better um, than owning rental properties unless you're just super passionate about it and you have the time and the resources to manage these rentals yourself. And um, if you really want to expand your portfolio, that becomes a full-time job. And a lot of you, I'm sure, I'm sure if you're watching and you're looking for different ways to invest your money, you probably don't have the time to start acquiring a whole bunch of rental properties. So private lending is the answer there. The next key is how to make money regardless of where the real estate market is. And a good private lender knows how to capitalize regardless of where that market is, where house prices are going, whether they're going up, down, or flat. And I'm going to show you a little bit about how as a lender to protect yourself, to make sure that you're always making money with regardless of what's going on around you. Now there's three main ways that you can avoid um, having a down market and still capitalize. Number one, it always goes back to loan to value. And I'll explain this again, really simple. So say a property is worth a hundred thousand dollars and your loan on the property is $50,000. Okay. So 50,000 is half of a hundred thousand. And so your loan to value is 50%. And so what that means is there's $50,000 worth of equity behind your loan as cushion or protection for you. So that say something were to happen and you, the property sold, you could sell it for half price and you know that someone's going to buy a property for half price, regardless of where the market's at and you'll be able to recover your loan. So my advice anyway, and what we do is if the market is flat or looking like it's starting to head trend downwards is you just want to make sure that you're expanding that loan to value cushion. So in a hot market where, where house prices are rising, maybe you're willing to have uh, do loans where the loan to value is 80, 85, maybe even 90% of what the value is worth. Whereas if a market is unpredictable or going down, maybe you're only willing to do a loan where it's 50, 60, 70% loan to value. Now, the other great thing is with real estate markets move slowly. So this isn't a situation where you wake up in the morning and house prices have dropped 25%. Even back when uh, the market crashed back in 2007 and eight, and we all know house prices dropped fairly drastically, but this was over months in years. So this isn't the case where it just happened like this. And the next morning, you know, your loan is your house and the value of the house is wiped out. So as long as you're setting up your loan lengths short enough, especially when the market looks like it could be going down, if your loan lengths are only three, four, six months, then even if the market is heading downwards, you've got that equity cushion so that you'll be protected and you'll be out of the, out of the loan by the time properties continue to drop below the value of your loan. Um, and the other easy way is simply invest in markets that are going up. 
So the cool thing about real estate is the principles are always the same. So if you know how to analyze an investment property opportunity and make up, make, make the deal happen, um, set up your loan, then you can do this anywhere. So you can pick and choose your markets based on where the real estate cycle, where the, where the housing is on the real estate cycle, and just invest in markets that you think are heading upwards instead of, you know, you don't necessarily have to be lending in your own backyard, in your own city. And the only real important thing there is to know, make sure you're familiar with the lending rules and the, and the rules of the game wherever you're investing. So if you're investing in Texas where I invest, it's a little bit different some of the rules and regulations uh, and laws than say, I don't know, Ohio. So you just wanna make sure that you're familiar with, with what your rights are and, and the rules of the game before you lend in those places. So that's how I recommend avoiding and making money in any market. Wait, before you go, I just really need to say that I am not an attorney, nor am I an accountant or a financial advisor. Okay, so I really strongly recommend that you seek out some advice before you make the move to becoming a private lender on real estate. Um, I use an attorney and an accountant. I run everything by them and I spend quite a bit of time educating myself with my attorney. They handle all of my deals that I do. I make sure that it's going through them first because I wanna make sure that I am in compliance with all of the laws and rules and regulations. And I wanna know where, what my rights are as a lender and as a borrower to make sure that I'm taking full advantage of the opportunity and that I want to make sure that you're hitting the ground running and doing everything right the first time, okay? Because this may not apply to everyone. This may not be right for everyone. Everyone's situation is a little bit different and you really need to have a professional look at your situation, look at your plan, and, and make sure you're doing the right thing. With that, I am really excited to offer you a one-on-one -on -one private lending strategy session, okay? So this is a call with me, either through Skype or on the phone, and we'll sit down and we'll talk about your plans as a private lender. We'll look at your situation, we'll look at your goals, and I'll be able to answer any questions that you have about private lending and uh, helping you get started the right way, get started quickly, because I know this is a lot to take in and sometimes you just need a, someone to hold your hand and get you started. And so this is what I'm offering you. I want you to succeed. I want you to be able to take this information and move it to the next step so that you're on your path to building a lifestyle of your dreams. And I want you to create a situation where you are earning more money because of these videos. And if you're not having that support, you're missing out, you really are. So take advantage. All you need to do is click the link below or the button below and you'll be taken to a form where you can sign up for a free private lending strategy session with me on the phone or through Skype. I look forward to talking with you. This is awesome stuff. I'm sure you've got questions and I'm ready to answer them for you. And I've got a lot more to share with you, a lot more tips and uh, I can share some of my own stories with you. So this only scratches the surface and you need to get on a call with me, okay? Thanks for watching and I look forward to talking to you.